Hi, Pete Callard here for Six String Alliance, and this time we're going to be pulling apart a brilliant Michael Brecker lick and discussing ways we can expand on it. And just before we check out the lick, a quick reminder, you can download the tab for all of the examples from this video for free. Just click on the link in the description down below. So as I mentioned previously, we're going to be looking at ways we can expand upon a great Michael Brecker arpeggio lick. So let me play the lick a couple of times to start off with. So the lick itself, it's over an F major or F major 7th chord. And it's all based around an F major arpeggio shape or in this case, a couple of shapes, the way we fingered it. And before we start, it's important to mention that as this was played on tenor saxophone, there's no correct way to finger this on the guitar. So the fingerings which I've put in the transcription, which I'm using here, are just suggestions, but feel free to adapt them to any way you want. But for this, I'm starting around this F major triad arpeggio. This is F major, around the 5th fret here, and we start on this A here on the 5th fret, and then go up to the B flat on the 6th fret and pull back off to the A, and go down to the F here on the 6th fret and the B string, then the C, here on the 5th fret on the G string. Then we go to the G here on the 8th fret on the B string and pull off to the F on the 6th fret. Then to this D here on the 7th fret on the G string and pull off to the C on the 5th fret. Then go down to the A here on the 7th fret on the A string. And the F here on the 8th fret on the A string. Then here there's a position shift. I mean, as I said, you know, this is the way that I'm fingering it, but there are other ways you can finger this, but this is my suggestion. So we're shifting down here to the third fret on the G string, pulling off from B flat to A. Then going down to the F here on the third fret on the D string. And the C here on the A string, third fret. Then going up to the fifth fret on the D string to the note G. Pulling off to the F on the 3rd fret, then the C on the 3rd fret on the A string. Then to B flat here on the 6th fret on the bottom E string. Then the A to finish here on the 5th fret. So let's talk about what's going on with this lick. Because as I said, it's based around an F major arpeggio. Based around an F major triad, in fact. So that's the notes F, A and C. That's the one, the three and the five. We're basically working our way down this arpeggio shape in groups of four. But it's the pattern about this that's interesting, which I want to talk about. So, what he's doing with this is he's going down the arpeggio in groups of three. But in each case, he's starting with the note above from the F major scale. So the note above each of the chord tones, which starts each of these groups of three. So we're starting going from A to F to C. So he's starting on the note above from the F major scale above this A, so that's the note B flat. And it comes straight down the triad. So then the next group of three notes would be F to C to A. So Brecker is starting on the note above this F, so that's the root notes. So he's starting on the second, this G. So 
So then the next three notes from the arpeggio would be C, A, and F. So this time he's starting with the note above this C note from the F major scale, so that would be the note D. Then the next three notes from the arpeggio would be the notes A, F, and C. So again he's starting from the note A, but he's starting from the scale tone above this A, so that would be the B flat again. It's the same as here, but down an octave. And this is actually where I shifted position, you know, it's a personal choice. I shifted down to here rather than playing it here. As for me anyway, it makes the rest of this line a little bit easier to play. So then same thing again, he goes down the arpeggio, this time starting from the F, going down to the C, then down to the A. I mean, he differs from it slightly, but we'll get to that in a second. So this time as we're going from F to C to A, he starts from scale tone above the F from the F major scale, so that'd be the note G, pulling off to the F. In this case, to close the line off, he actually sticks a B flat between the C and the A. So it comes down the scale to finish. So you get this idea. So hopefully now you can see how when I say this is based around an F major arpeggio, that's exactly the framework that he's playing around. It's just this really nice concept of going down in groups of three down an arpeggio, but starting from the scale tone above the highest chord tone in each group of three. So it's a lovely idea, but I want to talk a bit about how we can take this idea and expand on it. So the obvious thing to do is to play this in different positions on the neck around different major arpeggio shapes. So being as this lick is in F major, we'll stay in F major. But let's try it somewhere else. Let's try it around this E shape F major chord. I'll play it up here, up an octave. So again, There's our arpeggio shape. And same approach, we're going to go down this in groups of three. But in each case, starting from the scale tone above the first chord tone. So here we're going F, C, and A. So I'll start from, again, the note above in the F major scale, which is the note G to get our four note pattern. So then the next part would be going from C to A to F. So scale tone above the C would be D. Then A to F to C. So again, the scale tone above the A is the B flat. I mean, it is obviously all the same notes as we had in the previous example, because we're playing around the same F major arpeggio shape, which is based on the same notes, even though the shape is different. The next three notes would be F to C to A. It's the same thing, start a whole step above on this G note. Then we can go down to the F to finish it off. Let's try that over the chord. So let's try this somewhere else. Let's try playing this around this F major shape, this A shape F major. 
So here would be the arpeggio shape. So if we take this pattern, we'd have the notes going down in groups of three. So first three notes would be C, A and F. So starting from the scale tone above, the C, we go from D. Down, then the next would be A, F and C. So the scale tone above the A would be the B flat. Then F to C to A. So the scale tone above the F would be a G. And finally C to A to F. So the scale tone above the C would be the D. You can finish down here on the C, the fifth. So we get this. Finally, for completeness, let's go down to this C shape that we were looking at earlier. Because if we just take this basic pattern through this shape, we would get this. Very similar to the Michael Brecker lick, but a bit more systematic. Right there we've got three great ideas, three great patterns just taken from this Michael Brecker idea. And incidentally, it's worth mentioning, although the lick itself is a Michael Brecker lick, the pattern is a well-used idea in jazz. It comes up again and again. So it's a great thing to work on for your arpeggio knowledge and your jazz vocabulary, as well as being a cool lick. So yeah, we've now got three patterns, three licks in three different areas of the neck. <laughs> So you can take this one down the octave. And this one up the octave. So there's lots to play with there. So let's finish up by playing this Michael Brecker line one more time, from which we got all these ideas. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at this brilliant Michael Brecker lick and discussing some of the ways that we can adapt and change it for our own playing. That's it from me for now, but I'll be back soon with more videos, so I'll see you then.